Hey guys, Alicia here and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Roman Small Watercolors. You may have heard me talk about this particular brand a couple times before. I've mentioned them, but I've never gotten to making an actual video about them. I've had my original set of 12 colors for a while now. They were actually sent to me by a lovely follower from Poland who had a set and I was so so grateful that I got to try these. I don't know if the 12 color set that I had is an official set or not, but I really enjoyed them and was kind of just holding out for the opportunity to get to try more of them and build a more official palette and customize some things. And I actually have you guys to thank for this video. I recently um, purchased a bunch, let's see, if I already had 12, I think, and I wanted to get up to 36, so I purchased 24 more colors so that I could fill, my original plan was to fill a 36 pan palette with these, so I ordered a bunch from Jackson's Art Supplies. And I have actually been saving up affiliate credit from Jackson's, so the only reason I had the uh, means, the money, to, to purchase these paints was because you guys have been shopping via my affiliate links. So thank you so much for doing that. So now we have a bunch of fun paints to explore together. I'm not going to be showing the unwrapping of every single color that I got here today, but I will be leaving links and a list of all of the colors in this palette down in the description of this video. If you want to see the specific colors that I got to customize this palette, it was a real treat to get to put together so many colors. I didn't do a perfect job and there are some adjustments that I'm going to have to make over time, but we'll talk about that soon. The Roman Small Watercolors, I believe that the man who makes these watercolors, I think he's based in Italy, I believe, and at the time of when I was sent these paints, you couldn't buy them on Jackson's. Um, he had a Facebook page, I think, but it was not super easy to get a hold of these paints outside of local conventions and art fairs that he was attending. So I was really excited when these paints were being offered at Jackson's and they became widely available to more people. I know a lot of other artists have already talked about them and tried them, so I'm excited to share my experiences with you guys. My original plan was to put these in one of the White Knights 36 color um, full pan palettes because I love that palette so much, so I bought an empty one. The problem then became that white night pans are shaped just a little bit different than these ones. These are a little bit chunkier, so they didn't fit at first. Fortunately, my husband was able to help me in shaving down the little tabs on the inside of these empty spots where the, where the paints go, so I was able to fit most of these full pans in. The pans are a little bit thicker than White Knight's pans, so I wasn't able to fit nine in each row. I was only able to fit eight in each row, which was a little bit of a sad thing because it meant that there were a couple colors that I had got that actually didn't fit in here. So I put half pans in so that they wouldn't wiggle out so much that they would just fall all over the place because this palette is kind of notorious for the pans getting everywhere if you don't keep it upright, if you turn it upside down. So I wanted to minimize that as much as possible. Fortunately, or I guess not really fortunately, it just kind of worked out that two of the colors that I purchased to go in this palette, I actually already had from the 12 color set. So there was a lot of pre-planning I could have done here that would have made this a better process, like actually trying to fit these full pans into the set that I already had of White Knight's watercolors to see if they were going to fit. And then I could have discovered, oh, they're not going to fit. And, and double checking the colors I already had to make sure I didn't get duplicates, but I didn't do that. That's all right though. Not everything is going to be a super perfectly planned process. Another little mistake I made was in purchasing a couple colors that are really similar to each other. There are a few colors I wish I hadn't gotten because I don't think I will use them that often. For example, the Naples Yellow. I got a Naples Yellow and a Naples Yellow Reddish. I like the reddish one, but the regular Naples Yellow falls into a category that I have oftentimes with other brands of this color, and that it's and that's just that it has too much white. It makes it not as versatile for mixing, and I don't like the finish of the color as much. I also have never owned a Prussian blue of any watercolor brand. I know that the actual genuine Prussian blue pigment is not very light fast, um, but I wanted to try it just to see how I liked the color 
but it's very, very similar to the Roman small indigo. So I should have just gotten indigo and skipped the Prussian blue. So I ended up with a couple of colors that I didn't actually need. That's all right though. Maybe I will customize it a little bit further down the line and fine tune some of the colors. I'm swatching everything here for you. So all of the, I guess, 34 colors, because two of them were duplicates, all of the 34 colors that I had, but you won't be seeing all of these colors in the final palette, because there was a couple that I took out. I took out the Naples yellow, and then one of the granulating neutral tones towards the end of the swatching, because I had so many of those that were different, not exactly the same, but they were pretty similar, so I ended up taking one of those out. I will be fine-tuning this palette over time, but this is what I have so far for these paints. I really, really love the unique variety in these colors, especially in the mixed granulating colors. So there are colors like, I believe they might call it mineral violet. There's a color that is a mix of like a, a, a violet or red pigment and um, ultramarine blue, and it granulates so beautifully. I, I love the granulating purpley blue colors that are offered by this brand. They're just absolutely gorgeous and so unique. So I wasn't really sure what I wanted to paint as an example piece for you guys when it came to this video. I've really been enjoying using YouTube videos to relax in my sketchbook lately. That's been really fun. I can't always do, you know, a big painting every week for a video. It's fun to just kind of relax with you guys and, and show you some products I'm enjoying or a process I've been having a lot of fun with lately. So I was kind of stumped about this one and was even thinking about holding off on the video to take some time to just relax for a little bit. I haven't been super stressed, but I was not very motivated to um, paint something. I've been playing a lot of Dragon Age Inquisition, well, all of the Dragon Age games, which I feel like I'm saying that all the time, which is basically true because the Dragon Age series of games is my favorite series of games. I've been playing all three of them recently, um, off and on at various points, but Inquisition is my favorite. And uh, every once in a while, Solist from Dragon Age Inquisition makes an appearance on this channel, but it's been a long time since I've painted him for a video. I think maybe 2017 was the last time, and then my very first art video that I ever posted on this channel that's very, very old. And I think I may have used Copic markers, and that was Solus as well. So um, he's been with me throughout my art journey on this channel, but I wanted to do something new and something quick also. So it's really interesting because of all the times that I've painted him for videos on the channel, this one is the best and also took the least amount of time. I believe I only painted for 20-25 minutes for this. It was just a couple of layers in my sketchbook and it was really really fun. I also wanted to show you guys how I mix colors on my palette which is why I wanted to have some time of being zoomed out there so you guys can see that when I'm mixing colors and that's why I love this palette so much and why I used it even though it wasn't a perfect fit for these watercolors is usually I'm mixing from just one well especially for skin tones. So every time I mix a new skin tone, I'm taking a little bit of the previous mixture and um, creating a new color with that. It helps to desaturate the colors out of the pan, and it also helps to keep all of the colors cohesive, so I end up with a palette that just works really well together. To talk a little bit about these watercolors, they are so, so nice to use and so enjoyable. I always love full pans. It's why I kind of gravitate toward my White Knight set because I can use my larger calligraphy brushes without smashing my brush into a tiny half pan. So I love the full pan format, but the colors themselves are so light and vibrant and it's difficult to pin them. They feel like a mix of the beautiful unique textures and granulation of Daniel Smith, while also the luminosity of Sennelier, not quite as much, but still just beautifully light, and they also have this clean vibrancy that reminds me of Magello Mission Gold. So it's this really interesting middle ground between 
really like Daniel Smith and Magello Mission Gold, this um, beautiful, vibrant colors that are unique in texture and the colors become natural so quickly. Like when you mix them together, they just, it's so easy to get natural, gorgeous, like earthy tones when you mix them. I had a lot of fun mixing together some of the granulating purples with yellow or mixing together the one orange color I got with like a cerulean blue to neutralize. So utilizing that granulation to get something that feels so classic to watercolors and allowing myself to really enjoy the granulation of the paints was so much fun and so enjoyable. It feels so different from my White Knights paints that I rely upon a lot because they don't granulate very much and it's just different and so fun. The quality of these paints is just superb. They're very, very nice. So if you have been on the fence about checking out this particular brand, um, at this point I can recommend them. If you have any specific questions about Roman Small Watercolors or about Dragon Age, I, I can always talk about Dragon Age. Just let me know. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing the setting up of this palette and just hanging out with me for a little while. As always, thank you so much to my patrons and my members on YouTube. I have been having a lot of fun with weekly vlogs and I'm currently working on painting some gouache mushrooms for August's sticker sheet. So excited about that. You can check those out if you are interested in supporting uh, me and this channel and my family. Okay, thank you guys so much for just hanging out and chatting with me for a little while and I will talk to you all in next week's video, probably, maybe. Might take a break, not sure. Okay, love you guys. Bye!